So in this lecture we're going to be moving on from ideal gases and we're actually going to be mainly considering solids and liquids. We're going to look at heat capacity and at latent heat. So this lecture is going to cover section 18.4 of your textbook. Everything covered in this lecture is also covered in the lab, specifically in the specific and latent heat laboratory exercise. So last lecture we had a look at adiabatic processes. We said adiabatic processes are ones in which no heat is transferred. So that means Q equals zero, which the first law of thermodynamics then becomes that the change in internal energy is equal to the work done. And we showed that in this case the equation PV to the gamma is constant applies. And gamma in this case is Cp over Cv where Cp is the specific heat of the gas at constant pressure and Cv is the specific heat of the gas at constant volume. Last lecture we also had a look at some of these definitions which you really need to know. So an isothermal process is one which happens at constant temperature. An example of an isothermal process is one which happens with very little insulation and very slowly. So in this case, whatever you're doing, it's constantly in thermal equilibrium with the surroundings, and so the temperature is constant. The equations that apply in this case are PV is constant. That comes from the ideal gas law, where NRT are constant. And the change in internal energy is equal to zero as if there's no change in temperature, there is no change in the internal energy. Next we looked at what isobaric means, this just means constant pressure. So an example of something happening at constant pressure is anything that happens at atmospheric pressure. So any process that you carry out which is open to the atmosphere so that that pressure is always in equilibrium with atmospheric pressure is isobaric. And the ideal gas law tells us that in this case, T on V is constant. And we saw that the heat added in this case is given by NCP delta T, where CP is that molar specific heat at constant pressure. Finally, we considered the isovolumetric case. These are things that happen at constant volume. So the most common example of this is some process carried out within a fixed container or a sealed room so that the volume cannot change. The ideal gas law in this case tells us that P on T is constant. And because the volume is not changing, there is no work done. So work is equal to zero. And so the change in internal energy is equal to the heat added, which is given by NCV delta T. Okay, so on to specific heats. We've seen before that specific heat is the amount of energy, usually in the form of heat, that needs to be added to raise one kilogram of a substance one degree C. So Q is equal to MC delta T is the form that's normally written in. C is different for different substances and it can be treated as a constant for a given substance as long as the change in temperature isn't too large. So this table presents the specific heats of some different substances. You can see for water it's very large, 4186. That is in fact the largest on this table. For metals it ranges from around about 900 for aluminium down to 129 for gold. And you can see that the specific heat for ice and for steam are different to the specific heat for water. Now we're lucky on Earth that the specific heat of water is so large. It's that large everywhere in the universe. But why we're lucky is it means that the ocean is able to absorb a lot of heat energy without changing its temperature very much. So this helps stabilize the Earth's climate. Over summer, the ocean temperature does rise a little bit. If the specific heat of water was much lower, then the temperature of the oceans would rise a lot more over summer, and we'd have much greater fluctuations in the temperature on Earth. So a question for you to try. Imagine you have one kilogram each of iron, glass, and water, and all three samples are at 10 degrees C. Rank the samples from highest to lowest temperature after 100 joules of energy is added to each sample. 
Part B, rank the samples from greatest to least amount of energy transfer by heat if each sample is to increase its temperature by 20 degrees C.